so good to have you join us today. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. Coming up on today's edition of Business Daily. Samsung Electronics' fourth quarter profits more than doubled over a year earlier thanks to record earnings in its chip business, which negated the impact of its failed Galaxy Note 7. With its senior population growing and working age population shrinking, is Korea headed for the demographic cliff? We sit down with an expert to talk about this. Samsung Electronics has posted better than expected earnings in the fourth quarter. It was mainly driven by strong performance in its semiconductor division, which negated losses from the company's failed Note 7 smartphone. Our Kim Minji starts us off. It was a pleasing report card for Samsung Electronics in the fourth quarter. Operating profit came to 9.2 trillion won, or roughly 7.9 billion U.S. dollars, in the October to December period. That's up more than 50 percent on-year and over 77 percent from the previous quarter. Sales came to $45.8 billion, almost unchanged from last year. The operating profit figure beats a market consensus by almost a billion dollars and marks the first time since the third quarter of 2013 that the tech giant's operating profit has topped the $9 trillion one mark. The strong earnings were mainly driven by Samsung's chip sector. The semiconductor arm posted a record quarterly operating profit of $4.3 billion thanks to an uptick in memory chip prices and demand for chips in mobile phones. This allowed the company to cancel out losses from its failed Note 7 smartphone, which cost the company over $5 billion. On Monday, Samsung said design flaws and manufacturing errors in the batteries caused some Note 7 phablets to burst into flames. Operating profit from the mobile division, traditionally the company's cash cow, came to $2.2 billion in the fourth quarter. Now that the company is looking to focus on improving safety, the launch of its next release, the Galaxy S8, has been delayed. So due to the absence of a new smartphone, profits are expected to stay similar to last year. Samsung also pointed to favorable foreign exchange conditions and said a number of acquisitions will enable future growth. The tech giant also announced plans for a share buyback of some $8 billion this year, a figure larger than expected, which analysts believe will give shares a bigger boost. But for the first quarter of this year, the company's profits are expected to dip slightly on a quarterly basis. Despite strong growth expected in its chip sector, home appliances sales will likely dip on seasonal factors, and marketing costs from its mobile division are projected to drag down on profits. Kim Minji, Business Daily. LG Display, the world's leading LCD panel maker, swung back into the black in the fourth quarter from the year before, thanks to a surge in operating income. The firm's net profit in the fourth quarter reached 825 billion won, or roughly 700 million U.S. dollars, in contrast to a loss of over 11 million dollars in the previous year. The company also saw its operating income shoot up by 1,400 percent to nearly 800 million dollars. The achievements are largely due to the firm's diversified product portfolio, rising panel prices, and favorable exchange rates. LG Display says it will expand its premium product lineup to better compete with its rivals and expects to reap further profit as panel prices rise. Here in Korea, it's that time of the year ago when people are busy buying gift sets to exchange during Lunar New Year holiday or Seoul, one of the nation's biggest holidays. But with the sluggish economy and a new anti-graft law in effect, department stores are seeing huge declines in their sales of the items. Our EG1 has more. Department stores are seeing their sales of Lunar New Year gift sets decline for the first time since record-keeping began in 2000 due to low consumer sentiment and a new anti-graph law. According to Lotte Department Store on Tuesday, its sales of the sets dropped by 1.2 percent from the same period last year. The biggest sales drop was seen in expensive gift sets priced above 50,000 Korean won or 43 U.S. dollars, which is the cap on gifts under the new law. That includes sets with fruit or meat, which saw a nearly 10 percent decrease in sales, while dried salted crocker fish, known in Korea as kulbi, saw a drop of over 20 percent. 
Hyundai department store also saw a huge drop in its sales by 9.1% from the same period last year, with its sales of meat, seafood and produce dropping by over 10%. At the same time, however, sales of gift sets under $43, many of which contain processed foods, jumped by 37 percent at Lotte department store. Experts say the sales figures can partially be attributed to the new anti graft law, which came into effect late last year. The law imposes spending limits on gifts given to public officials, journalists and teachers. Under the law, people can't accept meals worth more than $26, gifts worth more than $43, and gifts of cash at weddings and funerals of more than $86. Korea's sluggish consumer sentiment for January is another reason cited for the sales drop. This is the third straight month of decline for the index, which has also slumped to its lowest level since the country suffered the worst effects of the global financial crisis in early 2009. Easy one. Business Daily. Now, he's only a few days into the job, but U.S. President Donald Trump is already making good on his campaign pledges. Starting his first full week as president, he put pen to paper on an executive order, withdrawing the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership and effectively killing the deal. Our Eunice Kim tells us more. U.S. President Donald Trump has formally pulled the United States out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Signing the executive order in the Oval Office, President Trump said withdrawing from the TPP will be, quote, a great thing for American workers. Everyone knows what that means, right? We've been talking about this for a long time. Thank you. Great thing for the American worker, what we just did. On the campaign trail, Trump had attacked the TPP as a potential disaster for the United States, saying it would devastate the country's manufacturing sector. The 12-nation trade agreement negotiated by former President Barack Obama was aimed at increasing American influence in Asia, but it had increasingly fallen out of favor in both political parties. Regarding his trade policy with Mexico and Canada, President Trump promised to take steps to begin renegotiating the North American Free Trade Agreement, quote, at the appropriate time. Trump previously had said that meetings were already set up with the leaders of Canada and Mexico. After signing the TPP executive order, President Trump also signed orders that slash funding for international NGOs that provide abortions and that freeze the hiring of some federal workers. At the first Monday press conference of the Trump administration, White House spokesman Sean Spicer said President Trump will move away from multilateral trade policies and pursue, quote, free and fair bilateral trade that puts America first. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. A demographic cliff is a phenomenon which we see a sharp drop in the working population between the ages of 15 and 64 years old. It can lead to a cut in production and consumption, triggering slow economic growth. Now, the problem is that experts are expecting Korea's working age population to start shrinking this year. And over the next 20 years, only about half of the country's population will fall within this group. This forecast comes as Korea faces growing demographic pressure with a rapidly aging population, while its fertility rate sits at the lowest among 40 countries tracked by the OECD. So, how should the Korean economy prepare for a looming demographic cliff? Let's find out. Starting this year, Korea will see its productive population aged 15 to 64 decline. And by 2020, when baby boomers born between 1955 and 63 become senior citizens, the working age population is set to shrink by an average 340,000 people each year and 440,000 by 2030. Experts say this is especially concerning as Korea's economy is expected to continue to grow below the 3% mark over the next couple of years. 
As of 2015, Korea had a lower ratio of seniors in its population than other OECD members, at 12.8 percent. But data shows that by 2065, it'll be the highest at a lofty 42.5 percent. On top of this, the life expectancy has gone up compared to five years ago, imposing a bigger burden on the Korean economy in terms of pension payouts and health insurance costs. Overall, a rapidly aging population would limit the country's growth potential and result in slower spending, ultimately sending the economy over a demographic cliff. So what measures should be introduced as Korea stands on the cusp of deteriorating growth? And to tell us more about this, Professor Yang Jun Suk from the Catholic University of Korea joins us in the studio today. Great to have you here. Happy to be here. So over the past six decades, how has Korea's population trend changed? And also, what impact did these changes have on the Korean economy? Okay, well, uh, Korea underwent what uh, e development economists call a demographic shift. So uh, before we had a high uh, birth rate, but also high growth rate, so our uh, population growth wasn't very high. Mm -hmm. uh, but then because of the medical improvements, uh, we had at lower death rate, but still high birth rate. So we experienced a relatively high population growth. But now, uh, as the uh, economy, the culture sort of catches up to the economy, the birth rate has fallen also. Mm. So now uh, our uh, uh, the population growth rate has fallen, and it's fallen a bit more than what we would like it to be. Mm. So that's a problem. Uh, it's a problem for the growth rate because, well, uh, theoretically, economic growth rate is a rated sum of labor force gro rate, growth rate, investment, and uh, productivity growth rate. And uh, because we had a, a higher population growth rate, it didn't cause our growth, mm. but uh, it helped us take advantage of the opportunities uh, that came about because of our development. Mm. So when uh, opportunities for manufacturing, for exports came, labor force was there to take advantage of, but now that is disappearing. Mm. Also, because the uh, age profile is changing, we expect to see some changes in consumption patterns, uh, changes in government expenditure mm -hmm. patterns, tax patterns, and international finance patterns. Mm, now, I think the problem is looking increasingly more serious this year, considering that we've been hearing that the Korea's working age population will start to shrink this year. Yeah, uh, so as I mentioned before, uh, if there's no change in investment, uh, investment rate, then there doesn't seem to be. And if there's no changes in productivity, and I'm sorry to say that productivity growth has not been mm. a major contribution to Korean growth. Mm. Uh, so uh, falling growth, uh, falling uh, population uh, means falling labor force rate, uh, growth rate, and that means probably falling growth rate. And we can't, don't really see any opportunities for raising the uh, birth rate in the near future. Mm. So uh, we, uh, a lot of people are worried that we're going to be stuck in the uh, low uh, growth path. Mm. And that also means that because we have a higher uh, proportion mm. of older population, we're going to have more government expenditures and less tax receipts. Mm -hmm. So there will be more deficit, uh, more government debt in the long run. And we'll probably have to borrow more from abroad to get us over the hump. Mm -hmm. Problem is, we, uh, as long as the uh, population keeps on falling, we don't see the end of the hump. Mm. Now, let's talk about Japan's last two decades. I mean, this is when they went through an economic recession due to chronically low birth rate and an aging population. So how does Japan's situation then compare to Korea's situation now? Okay, well, uh, Japan right now has a higher proportion of over 65 than Korea, uh, but we're on a path to overtake them in the next decade or so. No. Uh, okay. Now, uh, the uh, way that it happened in Japan was that they had a large... Uh, real estate bubble, which hit the demographic problem, mm -hmm. uh, but then when that bubble burst and people lost a lot of their retirement savings, uh, they uh, had to make up for that lost savings very quickly. Mm -hmm. That meant that they reduced consumption, that re reduced demand, and uh, because of that, uh, because there was no demand, uh, the growth has been very slow, and coupled with their deflation problem, uh, people have been delayed pur delaying purchases for a long time, so they've been stuck in a very low growth uh, rate trap. Mm. Uh, and uh, Korea, uh, at least as far as the bubble bursting, isn't that bad. Uh, I think our uh, large construction projects during the 90s and uh, post 
Asian finance, uh, Asian financial crisis mm -hmm. boom during the uh, 2000s sort of hid the same demographic problem. But after the global financial crisis and because of the uh, low uh, interest rate policy that we had since then, mm. uh, people have realized that they're going to have to save more for their retirement. So they're not spending. And that's a big part of what's causing very slow growth in Korea right now. Mm. And uh, like we heard in the report and from you, a demographic cliff can eventually lead to a consumption cliff. And in fact, Korea consumer sentiment in January slipped for a third month, hitting a near eight-year low. Tell us more about this. Okay, well, as I mentioned before, uh, people have to be uh People want to save for their retirement, obviously, because they're going to have very little or no income after mm. they retire. So they're going to have to save for that when they were young. Uh, problem is, because of the low interest rate, because of the uh, uncertainties in the uh, labor market, they're not quite sure whether they could have enough income to save sufficiently. So they're cut, really cutting back on their consumption, and that is uh, having a... Uh, a feedback problem. Mm. Uh, as long as people are not buying, the economy is not going well. The economy is not going well. There's less jobs, and that worsens the problem. Okay. So, problem is how to break the chain, and there's really not a very good solution for it. Japan has been trying to break out of that chain for mm -hmm. 20 years, and it's not really been succeeding. Well, now, one of the solutions, though, could be to raise or increase this chronically low birth rate. But then, economically speaking, what are some of the measures then do you think the Korean government can put forth in order to make sure that Korea doesn't go over the demographic cliff? Okay, well, uh, I think Korea has been trying to do a lot to increase the birth rate. I'm not sure if that'll be successful. Mm -hmm. Even with countries that uh, had uh, su supposedly successful uh, fertility increases, like France, they're still below uh, birth of 2.1 children per woman. Mm. Uh, I think they're in 1.9. And that's partially because as the women join the uh, labor market, the opportunity cost of having the kids has gone up. Right. So uh, whenever we see a uh, advanced country with a large proportion of young people, it's usually from immigration. Mm. So uh, in order to get uh, out of this uh, demographic cliff, uh, Korea will probably have to have a much freer immigration laws mm. to let younger people from other countries come in. And then uh, to increase consumption, we'll probably have to uh, s strengthen the social safety net uh, so that people will be more secure, that they'll have some income during the retirement mm -hmm. so that they'll be freer to uh, spend more money now. All right. Thank you so much for your insight today. Thank you. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.